in order to protect the citizens of this state and that we do not need to wait for the federal government to protect ourselves all right let's uh, let's talk about this constitution the the homeland security prodded by the anti-defamation league and southern poverty law are trying to target uh Oath keepers, and they're tired. They're targeting and and demonizing the uh, uh, Tea Party members, the people that are attending the tea parties that you're going to be speaking at here. Well, uh, one right. of them here in Arizona. Why are they targeting these people that actually care or are getting active and talking about situations here on 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 the same things that you're the the same uh, platforms that you're you're running on here. Why is exactly it? Why is the homeless? They did it to me when I started the militias after Waco. They tried to paint us into a terrorist organization, and uh, I, my statement was, "What part of the Second Amendment don't you understand? The militia is the every able-bodied male between the ages of 18 and 45, and we're we're on call from the governor. The governor could call us up at any time." According to law, the U.S. law. Yes, uh, I, I recognize that the governor can do that, and I certainly defend the um, the constitutional position of the militia. Um, when we're talking about that, I rec I believe that that needs to be done under the authority and the direction of the of the governor, and that we need to be very careful in terms of taking um, force into our own hands in an assertive, proactive manner. So when we talk about uh, calling up a militia, um, I'm not talking about a citizen's and militia that is, you know, like groundswell where it's of our own volition. But I believe that, uh, and, and yes, I recognize that in the event of tyranny and the government running amok, um, we do have the right and ability to defend ourselves, and that's certainly one of the primary reasons for the right to bear arms. Um, yet if we tie that back to the discussion we were just having along the border and illegal immigration, etc. Um, I believe that that needs to come under a directive from the governor. Well, the governor has signed the law uh, allowing the uh, the police officers in the state to arrest or deport uh, uh, illegals, and the federal government is coming after her. So and, 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 you know, at the same time, the law officers, like Sheriff Devers and like uh, Sheriff Arpaio, they're being they're being threatened with assassination for following the governor's orders. Yes, I I, I understand that, and and I support that uh, position that SB 1070 establishes, where law enforcement has the ability to ask for citizenship when they detain or stop or arrest individuals, um, because that's been passed by the citizens of Arizona. It's been established by law. And yet now you do have the federal government coming in and, and intervening there. And I'm of the opinion that there's nothing in SB 1070 that contradicts federal law. Um, there, um, it, so we have an, a, an ability to defend ourselves. And, and, and I know that there's a, a bit of a power struggle that occurs in terms of who has jurisdiction to export and and those you know to um, deport. Sorry, not export to deport illegals. Um, so I know that that can be a difficult place, and so that creates more of a power struggle as well that we will have to work through. But uh, fundamentally, I have no issue with law enforcement having that ability to ask for citizenship um, during the normal course of doing their jobs. Good. Now let's talk about some international issues that if you're, if you're running for senator, you're going to have to deal with. And, and one of those, uh, can you, could you... Can you point out the part of the Constitution? I got a booklet here, so I, I don't. What uh, what what part of the Constitution gives a private bank the right to issue our money? I, I K I K A the Federal Reserve. I, I don't. You know, I don't believe that. Uh, well, you're hitting on an issue that's been that's been argued for hundreds of years, um, and yet you're correct in that uh, having a private bank issue currency um, becomes extremely difficult and no other private bank can get away with it the way that it's being done today. Yeah, as um, Thomas Jefferson as Thomas Jefferson put it, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, your children, the, the bank and the corporations that grow up around it will, uh, will leave your children 
homeless in the land that we conquered. Yes. And we got, um, we got a million Americans. Specifically to the Federal Reserve. I am, I am, well, you know, you could expand that to uh, the Bank of England, too. I guess they, uh, you know, that was part of the, sure. that was part of the reason we uh, created this country in the first place. That was yes. Our, our well, founding father, in other words, our founding fathers fought the new world order of their day. The sun never sets on the English Empire. And today, right. it's like America is being groomed for the, for the empire, and and that will that will uh, eventually here lead me into uh, my question about why uh, why haven't we uh, had a real war for uh, the last sixty years? Yeah, well, let, let's stick on the Federal Reserve for a second. I'm in favor of increasing audit and jurisdiction over the Federal Federal Reserve, and we should not abdicate um, the currency um, or monetary policy to a private organization. That must come back into the um, into the Congress where it belongs. There's no way that should be under the domain of of um, of a private bank and private citizens. Um, that is one of the things that is challenging over the long haul, and certainly I need to spend more time understanding it. Um, and yet, uh, 